title of my message this morning is, This Blood is for You. The cross itself did not start, or the message of the cross did not start at Golgotha. The message of the cross and this scarlet thread of redemption started way back in the Garden of Eden with the first Adam where the first Adam would bring sin into the world, the second in another garden would bring life. Two gardens. God's plan of salvation right through, even through the old covenant was grace. God never changes. God is the same. He was the same then as he is today. He is a gracious God. He was gracious to Rahab. He was gracious to Samson. He was gracious to Abraham. And we see this type, this prophetic type, where Abraham and Isaac, and Isaac is to be sacrificed. And yet God provided another way, a ram that would be caught in the thorns, a prophetic type, the crucifixion of Jesus. The first Adam in a garden brought sin and the second Adam in the garden. Another garden, the garden of Gethsemane, would say, not my will, but thine be done. From the garden where a betrayer would indicate who he was through a kiss to the trial and to the carrying of his cross, Isaiah says, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Any wonder Jesus was able to say, peace I leave with you. For the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Proper rendering is were healed. That passage there in Isaiah is speaking of salvation. Healed and restored in our relationship with God himself. Matthew 27. Jesus cried out with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn from top to bottom. The earth quaked and the rocks were split and the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised from the grave From the garden to the grave, in one day, Jesus changed the course of history. This veil that separated us from the presence of God now would be torn with God's own hands, torn from top to bottom, and the temple would be split in two and never again. Would there be any condemnation to those in Christ Jesus? For he had conquered death in his own death. And he had conquered condemnation by becoming our advocate with the Father. Dead that we might live. Accused that we might be innocent. Our shame became his guilt Our distance dissolved in three immortal words. In John 19 verse 30. So when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said these words. It, say it with me. It is finished. Bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. While on the cross, he forgave a criminal. 
He gave John care of Mary. He convicted a Roman soldier. And he asked God to forgive the world. Betrayed by a friend, denied by another, we see this Saviour and his blood is for you. Romans 8 verse 1 is why we can now say, There is therefore now no condemnation. There is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Romans 8, 18, For I consider the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Why did he do it? Have you ever asked that question? Why? I'm not that good. I'm getting older. I'll be gone. I'll be dead. You could have just let me be. And he said, because this blood is for you. Romans again. What then shall we say to these things? How do we sum all of this up? This scarlet thread of redemption. This grace that was given to so many. And yet poured out on a cross. What then shall we say to these things, if God is for us, say that with me. If God is for us, if God is for us, if God is for us, when they come against you, God has got your back. If God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for me, who can be against me? When they come against you, they're coming against someone that's bigger than you. Elvis Presley sang that song, Somebody Bigger Than You and I. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Do you think anything could be more valuable than the body and life of Jesus? I don't think so. And so anything he gives you after that has got to be a whole lot easier than the death of his son. And so when you pray, understand that he will give you all things. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. You never justified yourself. If you've done wrong, stop justifying yourself. Stop telling people how innocent you are. Go to God, because God will justify you. God is the justifier. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God. Who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Friends, this blood is for you. Can you receive that? Can you receive that right now? That his blood was for you? That if you were the only person, he would have still died? Does all of this make everything else, as the scriptures say, just merely vanity? the worrying about this and that, that argument you're having with your father or your mother or your children or your, you know, your your family. Doesn't it just seem so small compared to what we've just seen? Do you see that? It is almost like we complain about a gnat and yet there is a mountain of miracles awaiting for everyone who believes. If we could surrender, Lord, I surrender my worries. He says, do not fear, do not worry, for I am with you always, even to the end of the world. For this blood is for you. 
finally in Romans 8. How good is that? Can you do that? Aren't you? People on the recording don't know what I'm saying when I say how good is that. I'm keeping to time pretty well. I just want, I just, you know, my heart is for people to throw all the cares of this world away because he cares for you. The older I get, I realise I have less ahead of me than behind me. And I say, Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you for all that you have done. And if the message is getting boring to you of his son, then maybe you don't know the same Jesus that I do. And then we read in Romans 8, verse 37. Yet in all these things we are made more than conquerors. Through him who loved us. Who is that? Jesus. This is why I say his name. You'll hear me say it right the way through the service. We're worshipping God and I'm saying Jesus. When I go home I say Jesus. When I get in the car I'm saying Jesus. Because I love him. Because I know that he first loved me. Because I know that his love is everlasting. And when I fall on my knees, he picks me up. Yet in all these things we are made more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded. Oh yeah. That neither death nor life. Nor angels, nor principalities. Nor powers. Nor things present, nor things to come nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord, because this blood is for you. Bow your head. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. And this blood, and in 5, 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes speaking, Lord, We are not even scratching the surface as to what this scarlet thread of redemption, this overwhelming salvation, this life in eternal life means to all of us. How could we comprehend? How could we possibly comprehend? And yet one day we will see you face to face. And in that hour and that moment, we will fall to our knees and worship the Son of God. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. If you have not given your life to Jesus, then I would encourage you to do that right now. And so I would ask you all to repeat this prayer with me, knowing that your life will not be easier because you're a Christian. The world will not change because you gave your life to Jesus. The people around about you will more often than not be the same. But what will change is that you will have received eternal life, eternal confidence, because this blood is for you. And you will have access to the very throne of God. And just as Adam walked with God, you will walk with God himself. And the future for you will be in the hands, in the perfect hands of Christ your Saviour. And so if you would all repeat this prayer after me, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus. I understand what a sinner is. A sinner is one separated from God. A sinner is one who is self-willed doing our own thing. And yet you died. And God raised you from the dead. I give my heart. I turn away from my past. I turn toward you. I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I believe in Jesus. I give my heart. I give my soul, I give my future, I give my worries, I give my mind, 
I give it all to Jesus Christ. Make me born again. I receive eternal life in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen.